Augustine, also known as the ancient city and the very first city to be colonized in the US. And on today's In Between Here and There, we're gonna take a look at it, as well as the fort, Castillo del Marco? Castillo de San Marcos. Founded by Ponce de Leon when the Fountain of Youth was found. Speaking of the Fountain of Youth, let's go check that out. Am I allowed to go in? I think so. Fountain of Youth ticket. Uh, unfortunately, once I use this ticket, there will be no use of filming. Um, so once we come back out, there are some things out here. I'll give you any information we have. Hopefully once we're at the fort, it'll be a little bit more lenient. But once again, I do apologize. I was not aware of this. Um, we were actually just inside the archaeological park where the actual Fountain of Youth is located. Uh, we drank from the water. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't take you guys in due to the fact that it's a archaeological dig site. Um, they didn't allow any type of cameras or video cameras inside um, just because it has to be a private use thing and if I threw this up on YouTube with everything inside there it no longer is a private thing it is a public viewing so I do apologize that you guys didn't get to see the Fountain of Youth the water inside the Fountain of Youth is pretty cool actually it tastes very sulfury very irony and that's because all those minerals are inside there and that's actually what gave the Native Americans that lived in this area the young and vibrant youthfulness that they had why the Spaniards that came over their water over in the main the homeland for them was polluted and not good so when they came over here and saw that all these vitamins and minerals were in this water um, they were curious some other cool things in there including how the natives that were colonized on this area of land uh, lived a couple different huts um, different tools that they used everything from you know rocks being shaped into shovels and arrowheads to even like the jaws of alligators being used as knives uh, the other place that we're going to be coming up and seeing soon is going to be uh, the fort here in St. Augustine uh, I believe it's called the Castillo San Marcos Castillo de San Marcos this is Castillo de San Marco, also known as the St. Augustine Fort. Not by many, by me, because I don't know how to pronounce it properly. Castillo de San Marcos. Construction for this fort began in 1672 um, by the Spaniards to protect them and the city from European pirates. Yep, pirates. To give you an idea of how tall this wall is, it would probably take a good 25 Chrissies to reach the top of this. The entire fort took 23 years to make and is made by using 400,000 coquina bricks, all carved by hands, shipped in from an island just across the waterway. What is coquina, you ask? Well, coquina is basically natural shell cement have you ever played a video game where all of a sudden there's cannonballs being shot at you and then all of a sudden spontaneously your pirate ship is catching on fire well if you have you can thank this thing this is a shot furnace and what it would do is it would heat up the cannonballs that would be shot at said pirate ships um, once hitting said pirate ship the cannonball would be hot enough to spontaneously cause the boat made of wood to catch on fire. The fort is where little baby cannons learn and train to be cannons. And as you can see, here's a replica of how baby cannons grow up to be much larger cannons. It's the circle of cannon life. Speaking of cannons, I have a really great pirate joke. Why was the pirate afraid to get their picture taken? I don't know, but I'm sure you're about to tell me. Because they were gonna take it with a cannon. But a cannon, camera. 
And so by 1695, the fort was complete. Alright, so to enter the fort, you go over this really crazy drawbridge. And then go through a portcullis. What's a portcullis? Well, it's a fancy word for sliding gate. Drawbridge is pretty obvious, but the portcullis is a sliding gate. Somebody had to slide it, and that's what a portcullis is. This entrance was the only entrance into the fort from the entire fort, which is located on two acres of land. One of the very first rooms inside the fort is the soldiers' living quarters. While most of them lived in town and very close to the fort, when there was things happening, they stayed here. And this is just a replica of what life may have been like. Heading into the next room, which has a very small overhead, people were very small back then, we are brought into a prison. Acting as the town jail, the prison in the fort was where all the bad people went before the world's oldest jail was built. If you head back out of the living quarters into the main lobby of where the drawbridge is and head straight, you'll be brought out into this very big, very nice looking courtyard. A lot of the rooms now are empty and serve as educational showrooms to understand how this fort worked and what belonged in here at one point. But this next room we're going into, well it's pretty darn cool. Now you'd be asking yourself, why were those doors behind glass? Well that's because the, these doors were the original doors to the fort. That's right, the original doors. It's pretty cool that they kept them. And of course, because the doors are behind glass, you get to see the other side as well. You can see that there are larger doors, and there's a smaller door as well, so that people could come in when there wasn't a big deal going on, and they opened up a lot wider, and there was more important things happening. As you're entering the fort, one of the signs says that before this fort was built here, there was nine small wooden forts that were built earlier. Due to decay of wood or them being burnt down, they built Castillo de San Marco. Castillo de San Marcos. The reason that the fort was built as it is now was because of the dreaded pirate Robert. No, really, look, a pirate named Robert was the reason and that there was so much violence around here that prompted them to build this fort. The dreaded pirate Robert. This next room leads us into a room dedicated to how the soldiers protected the fort as well as some of the weaponry used. Any Weaponry or history buff will probably be able to guess where a lot of these bullets and shots were. But for those of us who don't, there is a fancy guide. So one of the cooler things in this room is this right here, which is a cannon that actually was found in the moat of the fort and it exploded. It is actually a 3,000 pound cannon, so imagine the force that would be needed to get something like that to explode. That is amazing. Exploded cannon. Wow. You can actually see the shots. One of the coolest parts about this fort is from the inside of each room, many of them connect so that you can continue through the fort inside. However, you could get to each room from outside in the courtyard as well. One of the oldest rooms in the fort is actually where I am now, which is the powder room. It's where they kept all their gunpowder and ammunition, and this is where they kept all that stuff until they discovered it was too humid in here for gunpowder, and it's a little bit too humid in here for me as well, so we're gonna head back out. It's kind of 
low headway as well. But the only way in and out is actually through this really neat and highly inconvenient crawl space. After being in that crawl space, walking around and standing upright is actually really, really nice. And you can tell by how small these people were back in, you know, the 16th, 1700s compared to today and how tall we are. My, how we've grown as a society. One of the things we take for granted, and I didn't even really think about it until I got here, is the restroom. We have great facilities now with flushing toilets and urinals and toilet paper, but back then they didn't have that. Instead, they had this room. Yep, this was the bathroom. And you did all your business on this sand. Well, we've seen all the rooms downstairs. It's now time to climb the stairs and look at the fort from a more guarded perspective. Thank you, Colonial Safety Man, for letting me know. So from the top of the Castillo de Sombrero... Castillo de San Marcos! You can see so much. Um, from one side you have the bay and a bridge over there called the Bridge of Lions. It connects the mainland St. Augustine to an island called Anastasia Island. Uh, so then you have the bay over here. And down in the corner of the fort up here there's actually a small little crevice with a turret for a sentry box. So back in the day when this fort was being used by the Spanish or the British, um, they'd be able to look through here, see into the bay from different angles, and they'd be able to inform those using the cannons and different captains and guards of what type of pirates or other scallywags we're coming to attack the city and the fort. Down on the other side of the fort, we also have another turret, but this was very different from the sentry tower we were just in. So over here we have a watchtower, and there was a similar tower across the bay. Similar, close to where the lighthouse is now, that men in the walk towers would send smoke and fire uh, signals to each other, and that would let the again, just like that watchtower on the other side, it would let people know of the comings and the attacks that were approaching the fort. This is the bay that the fort looks out onto. It's actually called Mantanza's Bay. And it was on this shore, somewhere along the shore during the year of 1586 that Sir Francis Drake, old, that old croony Sir Francis Drake, actually burnt uh, San Augustine and a new wooden fort called San Juan, uh, which is one of the forts that was built here previously. It was also on that, the same, same shoreline that in 1668, John Davis, who was an English corsair, sacked the town. So of course, with all the bad things that have happened, Mantezas means massacre in Spanish. Watchtowers that is closest to the village or old St. Augustine. However, this entire fort was built by hand. So, being the humans that we are, it was actually 
engineered and found that the bastion was three feet too low when being constructed in 1682. By 1686, corrections were made to the tower and it involved 100 Native Americans to help rebuild and reconstruct the Century Tower. And check out these two pillars. One is probably pretty close to an original Coquina pillar. Coquina. And the other has been reworked and remodeled and it's got brand new Coquina on it, showing you that even through the years and the different ways of building things, they've kept it as close to the original as possible. It's just really, really awesome. One of the great things about the top of this fort is that no matter where you are on the fort, there's a great viewpoint and vantage point to look at pretty much anything or everything you wanted to see in the immediate area. Um, the lines of defense you can see, you can see the bay, you can see the town. It was a great location for a fort. And while the Spanish didn't hold on to the fort forever, it made a great fort for whoever did own it at the time. As we leave this 320 old fort, we direct our attention to the opposite side of the road, which is now commonly called A1A, and we see our 453-year-old city known as St. Augustine. Let's go check out the city gates, the original city gates. St. Augustine's original city gates lead right on into St. George Street, which was, at the time, in colonial St. Augustine, its variation of Main Street. The pillars of this gate were also made of coquina. Everything was made of coquina. Coquina this, coquina that. Coquina. Coquina everything. Along with the fort and St. George Street, which has turned into pretty much a tourist mecca for shopping, St. Augustine also has a really cool colonial quarter, and this is the map to it. Can, can we go in? Can we go in? Due to monetary restraints, we can't. So, thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for other in between here and there videos, including Ripley's Believe It or Not and a possible ghost tour. We'll see how that goes. I'm not one for ghosts. However, if you did enjoy this video, you'd like to see us do more cool things here in St. Augustine, as well as elsewhere in Florida and the rest of the country, please go ahead to patreon.com slash omgitstopher and go ahead and donate to In Between Here and There. Your donations will help uh, these videos, our gas, and just making these things more interesting for you as well as for myself. Um, so with that, I guess, I'll see you in the next one.